Welcome to the online training for the Integrated Monarch Monitoring Program, or IMMP. This video is a companion to the online training for the IMMP, which is a program to collect data on monarchs and their habitats across their breeding range. In this video, you will learn more about monarch identification. We will describe the physical characteristics of monarchs, some of their biology, how to distinguish the different life stages of monarchs, and how to differentiate them from other similar species. There are several activities in the Integrated Monarch Monitoring Program that include identifying monarchs in different life stages. One of the objectives of this program is to understand monarch reproduction, such as when and where adults lay eggs. So you'll have to be able to correctly identify monarch eggs if you conduct the egg and larvae survey. The egg and larvae survey also requires that larvae are, identi are identified to instar, or caterpillar age, so we'll review how to identify which instar a larvae is in. Adult monarch surveys require that you correctly identify adult monarchs. And watch out, we'll review a few lookalikes here that can be tricky. First, we'll start with identifying each life stage of the monarch. Monarchs go through a complete metamorphosis during their lifetime. Complete metamorphosis consists of four stages egg, larvae, pupae, and adult. Each of these stages look quite different from each other, so it's important to be able to identify monarchs during all of these stages to make sure none are overlooked during your monitoring. We'll review all these stages during this presentation. Monarchs only lay their leg eggs on milkweed plants, pictured here. We have a separate training video on how to identify milkweed plants. Notably, Mil monarchs are not the only insects to lay eggs on milkweed, so it's important to know how to tell a monarch egg from other eggs or debris that you might find on the milkweed plant. Monarch eggs are about the size of a pinhead. They are visible to the naked eye, although a magnifying glass or hand lens can be helpful for viewing the details. If you don't have a magnifying glass, you could take a digital photo and zoom in on the screen. Eggs have vertical ridges running from the tip to the base, which you can clearly see on this zoomed in photo. They take three to five days to hatch, depending on temperature. Cooler temperatures slow down this process, and warmer temperatures speed it up. Eggs can be laid on milkweed as soon as it emerges from the ground. This may, may be as early as March in the southern U.S., or as late as June in the northern reaches of their range. Eggs can be laid on any part of the milkweed, Eggs are laid singly, not in clusters, so it is most common to find a single egg on a leaf, or even a single egg on a plant. However, sometimes multiple eggs are laid on a leaf or a plant, as shown here, so it is important to look at the entire plant when monitoring. Can you see both monarch eggs on this plant? Turning the leaf sideways can help view the characteristic pointed tip of the egg more easily. Note that the eggs of the queen butterfly, which occurs in the southwestern U.S., Florida, and northern half of Mexico, are identical in appearance to monarch eggs. Anytime you see something that looks like the monarch egg, record it as such. However, if you see a queen butterfly adult or a queen larvae in your sampling plot, record that in the notes section of your data sheet. This will be important for researchers to know that there were queen butterflies on your site so that they can analyze your data on monarch eggs appropriately. Here are eggs on the underside and the top of young common milkweed leaves. Can you find the egg on each plant shown? Eggs can be laid on any part of the milkweed plant, the top or bottom of the leaf, the stem, flower bud, or the open flower. In these images, eggs are on the stem, the leaf undersides, and the flower bud. Milkweed plants have a latex sap that is milky, thick, and white. It can seep from the plant's leaves, buds, stems, or flowers when these parts get slightly damaged. This may be from insect damage, from wind or nearby twigs bending the plant, or from touching or bending the plant during monitoring. Look carefully at the white specks to make sure that they have characteristic vertical lines and pointy tip of a monarch egg. Latex drops are more white or opaque as opposed to the creamy color of the egg. Latex drops may also be shiny if they're relatively new 
or yellowish if they're old. On the left hand picture, the egg is on the bottom and the latex drop is on the top. Note how the latex drop is shiny and not cream colored at all. Can you tell which one is the egg and which is the latex drop on the right hand photo? How could you tell them apart? Other insects or their eggs can also be mistaken for monarch eggs. Aphids can be often found on milkweed plants. They insert piercing mouth parts into milkweed plants and draw out fluids. Aphids commonly occur in large colonies, so it's helpful to remember that monarch eggs are usually laid singly. Large clusters of eggs are often laid by other insects, such as stink bugs. Look carefully for the characteristic pointy tip and vertical lines on the monarch egg. Take a few moments to decide if each of these photos is of a monarch egg or not of a monarch egg. Press pause to give yourself more time. The answers will be shown in about five seconds. Did you get the answers right? What helped you determine if it was a monarch egg or not? After three to five days developing in the egg, the monarch emerges as a larvae. For moths and butterflies, larvae are also called caterpillars. We'll continue to use the term larvae through this presentation, which aligns with the language used throughout the Integrated Monarch Monitoring Program protocol. There are five larvae shown on this image. These are the five different instars, or phases, that a larvae undergo as they age. Every few days, a monarch larvae will molt its skin in order to grow. The period between these molts is called an instar. Each new instar grows and expands until the outer skin splits. The head capsule falls off and the newly emerged larvae is able to crawl out of its skin. Monarch larvae are eating machines, growing 2,000 times their original mass. Some defining features of a monarch larvae are shown here. Larvae have four tentacles two near the head and two at the rear. Tentacles are sensory organs and aid in navigation. As an insect, monarch larvae have six true legs. These are a part of their thorax, or midsection. They also have ten prolegs, which are attached to their abdomen. They serve a similar function to true legs, but are not retained in the monarch's adulthood. The larvae head contains many parts. Their antenna, which aid in feeding and finding food, are located near the mandible and are very tiny and difficult to see. Note that it's the tentacles that are highly visible on the front and the back of the larvae, not the antenna. The head is also covered by a caps head capsule, which is shed while the larvae molts or soon thereafter. The five larval instars are shown here. They can be differentiated primarily by their tentacle length which we'll review in the next several slides. Although each instar is larger than the previous, individuals vary greatly. Therefore, size is not a great indicator of instar. This image, including tentacle length measurements and general body size information, is found on the back of the clipboard that's included in the Integrated Monarch Monitoring Program Kit. Kits can, can be purchased via the program website, which is provided at the end of this webinar. On the day that the larvae is going to emerge from the egg, a black pigment develops on its head and the eggshell becomes thin and transparent. This causes the egg to look black. The larvae chews its way out of the egg and consumes the rest of its eggshell as its first meal. Nothing goes to waste here and we'll see more of this efficiency as the larvae matures. Notice that the stripes are absent to barely noticeable. The iconic black, yellow, and white striping develops as the monarch eats milkweed. Also note the black head and the tiny, barely visible front tentacles. Rear tentacles are practically absent. These are the key diagnostic features of the first instar. Young monarch larvae also have a distinctive chewing pattern. At this stage, larvae eat in half moon or semicircle shapes. They do this to stop the flow of sticky latex to the area of leaf that they are eating. 
It's possible for a first instar to become stuck in the latex and die, so this strategy makes eating safer. The mandibles are small, so the first instar may only chew halfway through the leaf, leaving behind a semi-transparent window. Stripes become slightly more apparent as the first instar develops. Here are some more images of first instars and the clues they leave behind. Of course, only mark the larvae as present if you actually find the larvae. These clues may be left behind even after the larvae died or was eaten by a predator. So they can help you find out if a larvae is or was on a plant, but they're not proof that there's one currently there. Second instars have clearly visible black, yellow, and white stripes. Their face is no longer completely black. It contains black and yellow stripes as well. Their tentacles on the front and back are also clearly visible. Note how the front te tentacles are still quite short, and if folded down, flat against the head, they would not reach the tip of the head. After two to five days, the larvae will molt again into its third instar. The picture on the right, you can see the skin that is shed during molting. Each time the larvae molts, it typically turns around and eats the skin. In the third instar, the tentacles would reach the tip of the head if they were folded down. Size is not a good indicator of instar. Size varies based on how recently the larvae molted because it continues to grow after it molts. Size also varies based on temperature. Larvae will be smaller in cold temperatures. Can you tell which instar these two larvae are? Both are second instars. You can tell that they are not first instars because their heads are not solid black and their striping is very distinct. They are also second instars because their front tentacles would not reach the tip of their head if folded down. Their rear tentacles are visible, but just small nubs. See the difference in size? The one on the right has recently molted. In fact, the opaque color on his head is his head capsule, which has not finished molting quite yet. Can you tell which instar these two larvae on the bottom right are? The one on the left is a second instar. Its tentacles would not reach the tip of its head if they were folded down. The ones on the right side, however, would. This one's a third instar. Notice how they're nearly the same size and length. The second instar may be close to molting, or the third instar may be growing in colder conditions. Size is not a good indicator of instar. Always look at the tentacle length and be sure what instar you're looking at. These are fourth instar monarch larvae. What do you notice about the length of their tentacles? The tentacles of the fourth instar clearly extend beyond the front of its head if folded down. The tentacles of a fifth instar extend well beyond the front of the head and are so long that they droop and curl. Here are some more examples of fifth instars. Note their droopy, curved, long front tentacles. Another helpful indicator is the length of the rear tentacles. The rear tentacles are about as long as the front tentacles from the previous instar. Here, for example, the rear tentacles on the second instar are about the same length of the front tentacles on the first instar. The rear tentacles of the third instar are about the same length as the front tentacles on the second instar, and so on. Take a minute and see if you can identify which instar each larva is. Press pause to give yourself some more time. The slide will advance in about five seconds. Here are the answers. What helped you determine which was which? 
appear on the fourth instar with front tentacles that beyond the, extend beyond the tip of the face if folded down. The first, first instar has the diagnostic black head. The third instar has tentacles that would reach just to the tip of its face if folded down. The front tentacles on this second instar would not reach the tip of its face at all. But again, on the third instar, those tentacles would reach the tip of its face. Here are some more angles of different um, instars. Again, take a minute to determine which instar the larvae is. Press pause to give yourself more time. Here are the answers. Can you tell what the identifying characteristics for each of these photos are? Feel free to refer back to earlier in this video to refresh your memory. Or come back to it if it's been a while since you last saw a After 10 to 15 days of eating, growing, and molting, the larvae is ready to pupate. The fifth instar then leaves the milkweed in search for a safe, sheltered place to form a pupa. They typically do not pupate on the milkweed they've been eating. They may travel up to 10 meters from the milkweed plant and hang below stiff leaves as shown here or on branches, under window ledges or tables or other sheltered structures. The larvae then spins a silk pad with a spinneret located beneath its mandibles, or jaws. Once the silk pad is spun, the larvae turns back around and hangs upside down from its abdomen in a J shape for about 12 to 18 hours. When ready, the larvae molts one last time. The skin splits at the back of the head and neck area. Once this starts, it only takes about 30 seconds for the molt to finish. The shiny green pupa below is still soft. Within half an hour, the pupa will reshape itself into what most people recognize as the monarch pupa. The casing will completely harden within the next 24 hours. It's a myth that butterflies turn to goo, or soup, inside the pupa. If you look carefully, even the newly formed chrysalis here shows uh, wing veins and pads beneath the surface. The adult is already forming. The monarch pupates for about 10 to 14 days. About two weeks after pupation, the pigment of the adult butterfly begins to show through the now transparent casing. Pigment is the last thing to form before the monarch is ready to eclose or emerge from the pupal casing. It takes about 30 to 60 seconds for the monarch to open up the casing and make its way out. Its wings look very small and deformed at first, but it soon pumps its abdomen, releasing liquid into the wings that make them expand to their full size. The adult will hang upside down for four to five hours after emerging to let its wings dry and harden into their shape. The adult is still very fragile for the first 24 hours, but can fly as soon as the wings harden. Male and female adults look different. Males have spots on their hind wings called andraconial patches. In monarchs, these serve no purpose, but in other species of butterflies, they produce and release pheromones, which are scents used to attract mates. Females are slightly duller orange and have thicker wing veins on their uh, wings than males. For the Integrated Monarch Monitoring Program, you would only need to identify the sex of the monarch if you're rearing monarchs for the survival and parasitism activity, activity four. These characteristics can be hard to see in the field and you will not need to differentiate between males and females while surveying your plot. Here are some profile views of adult monarchs on nectar resources and in flight. Mimicking monarchs is a good strategy for other butterflies because predators have learned to avoid monarchs due to their toxicity from metabolizing the cardinaloids in the milkweed leaves that they consumed as larvae. The viceroy is a widespread butterfly in North America that strongly resembles the adult monarch. Can you tell the difference between the viceroy here shown on the left and the monarch shown on the right. Viceroids have a line across their lower hind wing. It's visible from both the upper and lower side, so you should be able to see this whether it's in flight or resting. Viceroids are also much smaller than monarchs. Their wingspan is typically less than three inches, while a monarch's wingspan is at least three and a half inches. 
Viceroys also fly differently from monarchs. Viceroys fly quickly and directly. Monarchs follow a flap, flap, glide pattern and are more slow. You don't need to worry about confusing a viceroy larvae with a monarch larvae. Viceroy larvae have a different mimicking strategy than the adults. The larvae mimic bird poop. Viceroys are widespread, so you may encounter them on surveys across more, most of North America. Viceroys live in moist, shrubby areas, like marshes and swamps. The queen butterfly is closely related to the monarch, and its larvae also feed on milkweeds. Like the monarch, the queen butterfly larvae sequester the cardinalides from the milkweed, making them distasteful to vertebrate predators. Adult queen butterflies look similar to monarchs, but have a rusty orange tinge, which becomes very dark close to the body. White spots also occur on the dorsal side, or the top side of the front wing within the orange. Queen butterflies are also slightly smaller, maxing out around the minimum size of a monarch. Queen butterflies occur in the south and southern, southwestern U.S. throughout the northern half of Mexico and in Florida. Their larvae also look somewhat like monarch larvae, which we'll get to momentarily. The queen larvae, upper left, can be mistaken for monarch larvae. Look closely, however, and you'll see three pairs of tentacles, as well as yellow dots within the black stripes. The black swallowtail and monarch larvae are somewhat similar, but note how green the swallowtail larvae is. Black swallowtail larvae also do not eat milkweeds, so you won't find them there. They eat plants in the Apaceae family, which includes carrots, parsley, and dill, for example. Which of these are monarchs? Press pause to give yourself more time. The answers will show in about five seconds. Did you have a hard time finding any monarchs? None of these are monarchs. Note that the line, note the lines across the hindwing of the two viceroys shown and the third pair of tentacles at the midsection of the queen butterfly larvae. Also note the rusty orange with white spots near the center of the adult queen's forewings. Thank you for completing the monarch identification training video. You now have the knowledge to correctly identify monarchs throughout their life cycle and differentiate them from mimics and other lookalikes. You can find all training materials at the website shown here or may contact Monarch Joint Venture staff with specific questions at the email address listed below. Thank you and happy monitoring.